As we continue this series, here's another chunk of questions that all have to do with forgiveness. In particular, forgiving the father of your child. We believe that God blessed us so that we can be a channel of blessings to others. We made this channel so we can bless other people. So there's baking, there's cooking, there's working out, there are dogs, our adventures, our travels. Hi, I'm Mickey. I'm Bettina. And I'm Gummy. And this is A A Blessing Blessing Channel. Remember last episode, we talked about forgiving others who look down on you and forgiving yourself and accepting your situation by first receiving forgiveness from the Lord. I had to discuss that first because I believe yun ang pundasyon ng pagpapatawad mo sa ama ng anak mo. And so before we can answer questions like, when is the right time to tell our kids about their father who left them? What should I tell my daughter if the day comes when she would ask me why we're not living with her dad? How do you prepare yourself when your daughter asks you about her dad and what went wrong in the process of the relationship? I want to tell her the truth, but I know she's too young to understand the real reason. Before you can answer these, I believe that you first need to address if there is any issue of unforgiveness in your heart towards the father of your child. Why? Just to share with you, after I received Jesus really as my Lord and Savior back in 2016, alam mo talagang nabuhay sa puso ko yung salita niya when he said that I will give you a new heart, I will put my spirit in you, I will give you a new set of desires, I will cause you to obey my commands and my statutes. Yung Ezekiel 36 na yun, sobrang naging totoo sa buhay ko. So much that Yung point na yon, I wanted to do everything I can to obey what God says in His Word. Wala akong gusto, hindi gawin kung ano yung gusto ni God. I reached that point na I just really want to obey the Lord in all things, all the things that He asks me to, even those that I know are hard. I want to read an excerpt. If you have the book, you can also read with me. This is on chapter 9. My new life and new heart came with new desires as well as challenges to test my newfound faith and convictions. Although doing what pleases the Lord may not always be easy, especially when I focus more on past offenses, I know God will supply me with supernatural strength so I can obey Him and not sin. The Bible says it is God who is at work in you both to will and to work for His good pleasure. I had to constantly remember that I can do all things because Jesus gives me strength. Apart from Him, maliban kay Jesus, wala akong kayang gawin. As John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Yes, kaya ko. Kaya kong harapin ang tatay ng anak ko at patawarin ng ganap at kalimutan ng lahat ng atraso niya. Kaya ko sa pamagitan ni Kristo. At gagawin ko ito dahil alam kong kalugod-lugod sa Panginoon na patawarin, mahalin, at pagpalain natin ang mga taong nakakasakit o nakasakit sa atin. I decided in my heart to fully forgive the father of my child, but this did not mean that I didn't struggle with it. I thought, absuelto na lang ba talaga siya ng ganun-ganun lang? I had to be reminded of the forgiveness I received from the Lord. Oo, ganun nga. Cancelled na. Forgiven and forgotten. Isa sa mga krutas o bunga na lagi kang nagbabasa ng Bible. Yung nakikilala mo yung Panginoon, pati yung puso niya. And as you do that, God changes your heart and really changes your desires. Mababago yung nais talaga ng puso mo na gusto mong sundin lahat ng gusto niya at gagawin mo yun kahit pa mahirap. At kabilang dun ay yung patawarin yung mga taong nakasakit sa'yo talaga. Yung mga tao na kinasusuklaman mo at kung pupwede mo lang silang burahin sa mundo, ay gagawin mo, takbuhan kung pupwede. But, because God said in His Word to forgive as I have been forgiven, then I know I'm supposed to also because it's good for me. Naniniwala ako na walang inuutos ang Panginoon na ikasasama natin. I believe everything He says is for our good. We just don't always agree because of many things, because we're hurt because of our pride. But just the same, it's really a wrestle to submit to God and say, Okay, Lord, dahil sabi mo, ito yung dapat kong gawin, gagawin ko. Kahit mahirap, Lord, gagawin mo. I want to read a passage from 
Colossians 3 verse 12. Since God chose you to be the holy people He loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender heart and mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord God forgave you, so you must forgive others. Oh, hindi ko salita yun. Salita ni Lord yun. So, ito lang yung nakakatuwa when you read the Bible. Kasi may power yung salita talaga ng Diyos. Ayaw mo man, mararamdaman mo yung force to obey. Mararamdaman mo yung need to obey. Kasi gusto mo i-please yung Diyos. Kasi gusto mo gawin ano yung tama. Gawin ano yung nararapat. And interestingly, this passage, this third chapter in Colossians, ang title nito ay Living the New Life. So, syempre ako, bilang bagong bigay ko yung buhay ko sa Panginoon, I want to live this new life a new way. Diba? And the Bible guides us in that. Sabi dito sa verse 5, So, put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Evil desires. So, syempre, kung meron tayo anger sa puso natin, anong prutas nun? Syempre, you'd want to do or think or say bad things. ba? Don't be greedy for a greedy person is an idolater worshipping the things of this world. Verse 7, You used to do this when your life was still part of the world. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Verse 10, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. Galing, di ba? Si Lord talaga nagsasabi at pag sinabi niya talaga may command na kailangan mong sundin. So talagang sobrang lina when He said, Remember, pinatawad ka ng Diyos, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. The reason why I'm emphasizing this is because you cannot give what you don't have. And because you receive, you receive the forgiveness of the Lord so you can give the same. Receiving forgiveness enables you to give forgiveness. So forgive as you have been forgiven. Diba sinabi niya that He will put His Spirit in us and cause us to obey His commands. And that means that pag sinabi niya, pag may inuto siya, pati yung grace o yung lakas para gawin yun, para sundin yun, ibibigay niya rin. So this command doesn't go without a power. In fact, a supernatural power to carry it out, to actually forgive kahit na naglalaban sa isip natin. And of course, there are so many reasons. Hurt ka, napakasama niya, pinabayaan niya kayo, o pinabayaan niya yung mga anak niya, yung mga anak nyo. So ano yun? Pag pinatawad ko, absuelto na lang siya. Um, nakakawala na siya. Talo ko kapag pinatawad ko siya. At parang, ano, okay na lang yun. Ganun-ganun na lang yun. Kalimutan na lang. Pero alam mo, kung pag ninilayan mo, yung mga sinabi ko lang, probably, yung mga nasa isip mo din, ganun yung kapatawaran ng Panginoon eh. Isn't that how the Lord forgave you? Your debts were cancelled. You were forgiven and your sins were remembered no more. This is exactly the same nature of forgiveness that God is asking us to give to these people who've hurt us. Possibly the person who's hurt you the most. It's the same forgiveness. But you cannot give that unless you first receive it. Kahit parang unfair sa isip ko, or parang hindi worthy, hindi dapat patawarin yung tao. But because God commanded me to, at dahil ang desire ng puso ko ay gawin ko ano yung gusto ng Panginoon, susunod ako. Susunod talaga ako. Baga kahit makipaggerahan ako sa Panginoon, kahit mag-wrestling kami, alam ko at the end of the day, susuko rin naman ako, ibibigay din naman ako, susunod din naman ako. Bakit ko papahihirapan yung sarili ko? So yung desire ko is really coming from a heart that does not want to sin. Kasi if sin by nature is I know what separates me from God, what will separate me from God. Although secure na yung relationship na yun, forever, but syempre yung, yung closeness namin, ayokong maapektuhan, ayokong magkagap. Kasi may sinasabi siya sa akin, sini-ignore ko lang. Bawa kunyari ikaw sa magulang mo, inuutusan ka, tapos hindi mo sinusunod. Can you confidently come up to your parents nang wala lang or to ask something? Siyempre hindi, di ba? Affected yung confidence mo. Parang may unspoken, unresolved issue. Kasi nga naman meron. So I also don't want that same thing to happen between me and my Heavenly Father. So susunod talaga ako. Parang kung kasalanan, Lord, to hold on to this anger, kung kasalanan yung hindi patawarin tong taong to, ayaw ko siyang gawin. Kasi magkakasala ako sa'yo. 
aside from my heart that seeks to follow God and to not sin, the more I also read the Bible, the more truths I learn about anger, about unforgiveness, about its consequences, and sobrang helpful yung truths na yun na mabasa mo, na mapaalalahanan ka. Um, for instance, in Romans 12.18, it says, If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Hanggat maaari, kung kaya. Sa totoo lang naman, kaya naman eh. Ayaw lang natin. Dahil, for us, pag nagpatawad tayo, talo tayo. So, anong tawag doon? Pride yun. Eh, sabi rin ng Bible, pride goes before destruction. So, parang, ah, uh, okay, I don't wanna go down that path, Lord. I don't wanna be destroyed. So, I will not be proud and I will humble myself. Kahit ako pa yung hurt, kahit ako pa yung dehado, but because you said, I should forgive. And because I know your heart that it's good for me, then I will forgive. Then I'll obey you, then I'll do it. Another one, Ephesians 4, 26 to 27, it says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. In other versions, it uses the word foothold. Foothold, parang yung paa pinasok mo na sa pinto. So, imagine mo ikaw, kung yung paa mo nasa loob na ng kwarto kahit papaalang yan, madali nang pumasok. I learned that through holding on to my anger, I could be letting the devil in, in my life, to do his plans, to carry out his plans. Anger, if holding on to anger, if holding on to unforgiveness will lead to that, ay ayoko nun. In NLT, the version says, And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. So do not let your anger control you. From this verse, we know that anger can control us. And it is the way that the, the enemy uses to, to launch his attacks in, in our life. But you one source of comfort for me is to remember that God is faithful. When He says that He will give you the strength, you can trust His word and you can believe that that's true. In Philippians 1, 6, Paul says, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. So, ganun na lang yung confidence ni Apostle Paul na ganun ka-faithful si God. Kung ano yung sinimulan niya, tatapusin niya yun. Hindi pwedeng hindi. So, even with that struggle in your heart to obey, but because you've already resolved to really follow God, hindi mangyayari kung talagang sinuko mo yung buhay mo kay Jesus, na hindi niya itutuloy yung sinimulan niya. Kahit pa tayo minsan yung nagpapadelay, tayo yung nagpapahirap, kasi tigas ng ulo natin eh, tigas ng puso natin eh. But He says that He is faithful to continue the good work that He began, to complete it even. Diba? How can we be sure of that? Number one, sinabi niya, diba? He will put His Spirit in us and cause us to obey Him. This, his Spirit will also guide us and teach us all truths, guide us into all things. John 16, 13 says, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. So because ang nature ni God is truth, everything that from Him is true. And He will continue through His Spirit to lead us into His truths. And where do we learn the truth? From His Word, from the Bible. Sabi ni Jesus, before He was crucified sa mga disciples niya, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So, ituturo na, igagayad na tayo, ipapaalala pa sa atin. Diba? So, walang dahilan. Wala talagang dahilan para hindi tayo sumunod. Kasi yung Spirit niya nananahan na sa atin. Just like a glove. So, when the Holy Spirit comes or dwells in us because we receive Jesus, then we can trust that it is Him who will be at work. At tayo, totoo lang, susunod lang tayo. Diba? The glove naman cannot move on its own if there's no hand in it. So kung my way to do it, at my power, walang dahilan na to do it. Pero ang tanong, paano ba patawarin yung ama ng anak natin? All I can share is how I did it. So first, I received God's forgiveness. Kasi it's really only then that I can give it. Second, I had to accept certain truths that I once denied for the most part of my parenting or siguro the first five years until the Lord surfaced this issue of unforgiveness in my mind, in my heart. Ako lang ang magulang ng anak ko. He is not the father of my child because he never played that part. But I had to accept. Kinailangan ko dumating sa punto 
at tanggapin na kahit anong ginawa niya o hindi niya ginawa, he remains to be the father of my child, whether I like it or not. The fact is, and the truth is, ama siya ng anak ko. He is the biological father of my child. And I had to accept that. Siyempre, dinideny ko, in my heart, dinideny ko siya for the longest time. Regardless of what he did or he did not do, that doesn't change the fact that he is the father of your child. Even if he never gave a single peso to support your child, ama pa rin siya ng anak ko. And I realized that it was my hurt that was causing me to think he's not the father of my child. I am the only parent of my child. Diba? Sobrang bitter ng tono ko. And I'm sure some of you also have that same sentiment in your heart. But let me remind you of the truth. Even I didn't want to accept this, but I had to. You need to accept that he is the father of your child. I also had to understand that forgiving him is for the best interest of my child. And this is not for the purpose of getting financial support now or in the future. This goes beyond that. Why? Why do I think it's best for my child? Number one, I can answer the questions of my child objectively, not emotionally or irrationally, not stemming from hurts. Also, it frees me to respectfully communicate with him in the future. In the event na gusto siyang makilala ng anak ko or kailangan na nilang mag-meet, kaya ko maging civil sa kanya dahil wala akong pinangahawak ng galit eh. Wala akong ninurse na anger o na unforgiveness sa puso ko. So kaya kong makipag-relate sa kanya ng may diplomasya. I think it's an opportunity for us parents to teach maturity to our kids that they should also not be governed by their emotions. And that regardless of what they feel, how they feel about people, like love, respect should be unconditional too. Forgiving the father of my child allows me to teach my child also forgiveness. Diba? For character building yan eh. Kung ako hindi magpatawad, paano ko tuturo sa anak ko? Do I want my child to grow up as an unforgiving person? A cold-hearted, hard-hearted person? No, I want my child to be a forgiving person, but I cannot teach her that or I cannot demand her to be that or command her to forgive if she doesn't see that in me, if I don't do that first. So, para may ituro ko sa anak ko, kailangan kong ipakita sa kanya. Kailangan kong gawin muna. Isa sa mga pinaka-importante na realize ko is that in forgiving the father of my child and freeing my heart from any anger, bitterness, hurts towards him, it allows me to let my child have a positive sense of herself. Bakit? You know, the thing with being angry about a person is that we really, by nature, if we do not resolve that anger in our heart, it will transform into other forms, other levels. Na palala ng palala. To the point that all we want to do is tear that person down. As in, you yurakan talaga natin yung pagkatao ng tao niya. But if I don't resolve that anger, If I don't deal with that, at nasa sa puso ko yan, di ba sabi ng Bible, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So kung ano yung nilalaman nito, ang siyang lalabas sa salita ko. So when the time comes that my child talks to me or asks me about her father, at hindi ko na-resolve to, do you think I have anything good to say to my child about her father? I don't think so. Kahit pa i-fake ko yan, kahit pa i-acting ko yan, lalabas at lalabas yan sa body language. At alam na mga anak natin yan. Our kids know when we are telling them the truth, when we are being sincere, or when we're hiding things, or when we're just acting. Alam nila yan. And so, remembering that he is a part of my child's identity. He will help her make sense of who she is. His identity, information about him, getting to know him eventually in the future will help your child answer the question, Who am I? Siyempre, ang tanong ng tao, Origin, saan ako nanggaling? Sino ang ninuno ko? Saan ako nag-ugat? Saan ako nagmula? Sino ang magulang ko? At lahat ng tao tinatanong ko. And one day, our kids will ask themselves, Who am I? And if you don't clear your heart of those issues against their father, you cannot help but say bad things. And let me tell you, I have been warned that when you say bad things to your kids about their father, it reflects on them. Let's say you call him names. Like, eh, blanka eh. So, anong magre-rehisto sa isip ng mga anak natin? Ay, anak ako ng blank. Diba? So, napaka-negative ng, ng sense of identity nila if we let that happen. If we let that anger go unresolved. 
And sa totoo lang, kailangan natin tanggapin. Kung hindi naman dahil sa taong ito, ay hindi naman tayo nagkaroon ng anak natin. ba? Diba? So at least for that, we can be thankful. I had to remember and constantly believe that God is a purpose for God. If you've given your life to the Lord, you can really bank on Romans 8.28 when He says, He causes all things to work together for good to those who love Him and whom He called. So you can trust His Word. You can trust that ano man ang pinagdaanan mo, lahat ng pinagdaanan mo, may purpose yan si God. At good yung purposes niya. Kasi good siya. So I had to always remember that. The Lord, even if this is against my feelings, I know you're good. And I can trust you. I know this is for my good, so I'll do it. And I also had to see in my faith that God is just, God is fair, and God is the final judge. And He said that in His Word. Romans 12.19, sabi niya, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So, yung reward and punishment system, wala sa kamay natin yan. Nasa kamay ng Panginoon yan. Our job is to forgive. It's His job to save. It's His job to punish. It's His job to reward. At labas tayo doon. Let God, who is judge, who is the just judge, who is the final judge, do the judging, give the punishment, give the reward accordingly. Kasi yung pagbigay ng reward at ng parusa, hindi natin saklaw yun eh. That's all in His hand. Ang sa atin, what we are commanded to do is to forgive. So that's our job. My job is to forgive. It's up to the Lord to honor that forgiveness. And it's up to the Lord to punish people for their deeds. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10 says, For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. So si God yung judge. At the end of our lives, we will give an account. Haharap tayo sa hukob at tatanggap tayo ng parusa o pabuya. Depende sa kung ano yung mga ginawa natin sa buhay na ito. Pinakahuli at pinakaimportante, I really had to pray not just for the desire to forgive Him, but the desire to pray for Him and that He will also encounter Jesus and He will also give His life to the Lord because I know yun ang best para sa anak namin. Makilala niya rin ang Panginoon. So now, here we go. Time to answer the questions. From Tris Han, how do you forgive him? Just give. As freely as you have received, also freely give, sabi nga ng Bible. I remember the verse that really convicted me was James 4.17. It says, So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So alam kong yun yung tama at dapat at kailangan kong gawin. Yung patawarin ang mga nakasakit sa akin, ang patawarin ang ama ng anak ko. At kung hindi ko gawin yun, sin of omission, then kasalanan pa rin siya. So alam yung ang kasalanan, hindi lang yan mga bagay na ginagawa. May mga kasalanan din na mga tinatawag na sin of omission dahil hindi mo ginagawa o hindi mo ginawa. So if I fail to forgive, then that is a sin of omission for me. I know I'm supposed to do that. Then that's sin. From Greg Dasho, how were you able to raise Gummy without anger for her biological father? I resolved my anger towards her father. Yun talaga yung unang-una. Ang prayer ko noon, mula nung nagkahiwalik kami, is for God to help me forgive. Kasi alam ko kung ano man yung feelings ko towards him, malalabas ko sa anak ko. It will really come out and I know it will really affect her. Alam ko kung walang anger dito, walang lalabas na anger. Diba? Luke 6, 45 says, The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Lahat naman ang sinasabi natin, galing lahat sa puso. So kung resolve to, walang anger to, wala rin bitter words na lalabas sa bibig ko, sa anak ko, towards her father. So how did I raise her without anger? I first had to let go of that anger. From Reg Dasho pa rin, naisip niyo po ba before na hindi mahal ng daddy niya si Gami? Siguro may time na, oo, oh, siguro nag, nag-cruise yun sa isip ko because um, what happened to us, hindi naman niya kami iniwan. Kami yung umalis eh. Ako yung nang iwan. But syempre, for me, in my mind then, iba naman yung iniwan sa pinabayaan. Hindi niya man iniwan yung anak niya, pero pinabayaan niya. So, parang yun yung pinakahinanakit ko sa kanya noon. But, 
you know, part of honoring God's command to forgive, even when we don't feel like it, eventually the emotions will flow. And God really softened my heart to make me understand and think better towards Him. I chose to say na walang magulang na hindi mahal ang anak. It's just that they don't know probably how to love or they don't know how to be a father or may mga issues sila sa buhay that hinders them from fully being a father or playing that part or being in a healthy relationship. I don't know. But I would rather say that maybe he just doesn't know how to be a father. But that doesn't mean he doesn't love her. So if you ask me now, I believe walang magulang na hindi mahal na. Hindi lang nila alam kung paano maging magulang. I think it was better for me to think that way because parang hindi naman helpful yung mga negative thoughts. Diba? I had to remind myself of this verse in Philippians 4, verse 8, where it says, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is anything excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So if God commands me to fix my thought and to choose my thoughts and to think only the right and the good, then I'll do that. Because thinking otherwise is not helpful. I'm sure it's not going to be helpful. So I choose to think such things. O diba, simple lang naman yung sabot sa mga tanong. Pero yung proseso, para dumating ka sa puntong to, matagal, mahirap, at masakit. Pero posible. Yun yung hope. Can you let me pray? I'll pray. Let's pray. Lord, Lord, will you please help us do what's good and right? Will you take away anything that hinders us from forgiving? If it's hurt, if it's pride, Lord, we give you our hurt. Heal us from it. You mend the brokenhearted. Take away my pride and replace it with your humility. I know, Lord, that pride goes before destruction and I don't want to go that path. If this humility is what will free me to live joyfully and peacefully and will cause my child to see you in me, that he or she may know you. So let me be lowly and meek, like your son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are a present help. Thank you that you're faithful. Thank you that you are with me through all the valleys in this life. Lord, will you hold my hand? As I start this painful journey of forgiving the person who has possibly hurt me the most, please help me freely forgive. Help me freely give the forgiveness you have lovingly extended to me. Amen. God bless you.